With an ultra fast CPU and GPU combo, options for things like 10 gigabit networking, tons of connectivity, including Thunderbolt, and a diminutive size that frankly is smaller than a lot of the small mini PCs that we have on the market these days, the Apple Mac Mini M4 is absolutely phenomenal. The best part is that we purchased one of these units for only $550. Now, Apple charges a ton for upgrades, but there's a lot here. So I think, well, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this might be the coolest mini PC that's out there, although it's not a PC because it's an Apple Mac Mini M4. And there are various options that we've seen and tested, and I have to say that this thing is absolutely awesome for a large set of users. Now, it's not perfect, and I think that there are a lot of folks that are going to be much better served by a traditional mini PC from, you know, a lot of the vendors that are out there because AMD and Intel actually have some pretty cool designs. But on the other hand, what Apple is offering in this is uh, this nothing short of phenomenal. And we've been testing the Apple Mac Mini M4 for a long time. In fact, we have 10 gig models. We even have Thunderbolt docks with 25 gig Ethernet. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I really want to get into not just how good the system is because it's phenomenal, but also how it compares to a lot of the Windows based mini PCs. And just to make this a little bit more fun, uh, a couple challenges. Number one, I'm getting on a plane in, uh, in less than an hour. So I need to go get to the airport, but also so I want to talk about why the fact that Apple not wanting to sell you a GPU like an AMD or an NVIDIA or an Intel actually makes their processors much better when they scale up. And so for that, I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in over three years, and I'm going to be ditching the M1 Max 64 gig, and I'm going to be trying out the M4 Max 64 gig MacBook Pro because I want to see how it scales, not just from the chips that are in these lower cost units, but also the higher end systems. And uh, well, I actually kind of already know some of the answers, but I can't wait to get to that in a little bit. Now I need to go jump in an Uber because it's super computing this week and I need to go get on a red eye, but I do want to say thank you to all the STH YouTube members that make pieces like this possible so we can go buy all these systems and go tell you what we think of them. So thank you for your support. And if you do want to join those members, you can do so down below and go click join. With that, I'm going to get on the road and let's get to the hardware. Okay, so on the front of the Apple Mac Mini M4, there are two USB-C ports, and these are USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. That means they're 10 gigabits per second. We also have an audio jack and our little power LED. On the sides, there's really not that much going on, but the back has a lot of really cool things. First off, you have an HDMI port, always useful. You can go hook it up to a TV, monitor, whatever you want. You also have a gigabit ethernet port. Now that's on the base model for about $100 more, you can get a 10G base T port, you get 10 gigabit ethernet. There are a lot of mini PCs that don't even offer that as an option, but you can get it on here. Another important thing is that there's an AC power input because, well, the power adapter is built into this, so you don't have a power adapter sitting around on a wall or sitting around randomly on a desk somewhere. Instead, it's built in, which most mini PCs that are this size, frankly, they just don't have that. And there's one more really cool feature back here. There are three Thunderbolt ports. Now, on the base model M4, those are only Thunderbolt 4 ports, but if you were to get the M4 Pro, those become 120 gigabit Thunderbolt 5 ports. I mean, that is absolutely crazy connectivity. And by the way, if you do buy the base model M4 and you want faster networking, you can always use a Thunderbolt adapter, either a 10 gigabit adapter or this one that we're just gonna show you, which is a super cool 25 gigabit Thunderbolt adapter that I ordered on Kickstarter a little while ago. And at this point, I just wanna point out a couple things. Like first off, unlike most mini PCs on the Windows side, you don't have a USB type A, you don't have USB 2, you don't have a USB 3 type A port or anything like that. Everything here is either a USB 3.2 Gen 2 type C port on the front, or it's a Thunderbolt port and you can also run things like USB 4 off of that. Or alternatively, you can use these as display outputs. And so overall, I think that, you know, this has a ton of connectivity and I really wish that folks like, you know, the AMD mini PC vendors, but also Intel mini PC vendors, I just wish that they all took the lead or at least looked at what Apple was doing and said, hey, maybe we should go put more external connectivity. Now, this thing is super small. The one bummer is that the power button is on the bottom, which I think people have gone over that a gajillion times, but this is uh, this is dumb. Let's just call it what it is. But maybe my favorite part of this is that this is so small that I have this packed in my carry-on over here. I'm taking this to Atlanta with me and I am falling asleep on a plane in uh, my flight leaves in about 10 minutes or so. And I'm gonna be able to pack this in my carry-on luggage and it frankly doesn't take up that much space. I need to go board my flight, but why don't we go talk about that M4 chip a little bit? 
Now, the base model Mac Mini M4 has 10 CPU cores. That's four performance cores and six efficiency cores. There's also a 10 core GPU, and there's things in that GPU like hardware accelerated ray tracing. There's also a 16 core neural engine, which is really for that AI acceleration. You also get 16 gigabytes of memory. I mean, finally, Apple has joined the 2010s, I guess. Now, there are options to upgrade this to 24 or 32 gigabytes, but it's $200 for each eight gigabytes. That is like highway robbery. This is something like eight times as much as we've been seeing or spending on memory, which is absolutely crazy town. At least you're starting with about $400 of memory, I guess with 16 gigabytes, without having to upgrade, but those upgrades are eye-watering. Now in the base $550 to $600 model, you're only gonna get about 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. And at first, I thought this wasn't great since we do a lot of 4K video production and 256 gigs is really not that much. Then I asked my wife how much storage she was using on her Mac Mini M1 edition, and it was only 119 gigabytes. So there's certainly a use case for the smaller SSD. Now, of course, you can upgrade to 512 gigabytes for $200 or one terabyte for $400 more, but for some context, that's at least four times what you would pay to upgrade on another system like a Windows system if you're just going to add a one terabyte SSD. Now, the 10 GBase T option is great at $100. This allows you to add storage via NAS, something like the Terramaster F8 SSD NAS that we reviewed. We also showed recently some B-roll with the Blackmagic Cloud Pod where you can go and put USB disks uh, onto a 10 gig network. And so that's a very low cost way to go add 10 G base T. We also now have much cheaper 10 G base T switches like the Microtik CRS304 that we just reviewed and pairs really well with a Mac mini 10 gig like this. To me, this is by far one of the best value upgrades in the entire configurator. And one that I wish Windows mini PC vendors just simply did more often instead of just doing two and a half gig ethernet. Now, if you more than double the cost, you can get a M4 Pro chip in the Mac mini, and that has a 12 core CPU, but you get eight P cores and four E cores. So that's a lot more performance because you're doubling the P core count. There's also a 16 core GPU, and there's an option to spend even more money and go up to a 14 core CPU and a 20 core GPU. Going to the M4 Pro also more than doubles the memory bandwidth, but of course it's also $1399 for the base model. One big difference between how Apple markets its chips versus how Intel and AMD market its mini PC chips is that Apple just says, hey, we're gonna give you more cores, more GPU cores, more memory bandwidth, as you move up the stack. A lot of times on the Intel and AMD side, they're saying, hey, you know, we'll give you a new SKU that has maybe 200 megahertz more. So while Apple certainly is charging you more for the M4 chips, when you do upgrade to a different model, you're also getting a lot more compute resources on the CPU side, GPU side, and often the memory bandwidth side as well. And that's very different from what we see on the Intel and AMD sides. Now, overall, the CPU side of the base Mac Mini M4 is absolutely fast, and it's more than enough to keep up with solutions from AMD and Intel. Compared to the M1 Mac Mini, the M4 is an enormous leap in only about three-ish years based on the CPU and GPU side. Apple is really focused on the single thread performance, which helps a lot with the responsiveness of a system. From the GPU perspective, Apple is also very close, but with a twist. It's probably closer to something like the B-Link SER9, a thousand dollar system, albeit with 32 gigs and one terabyte. So, you know, really with similar capacity, the Apple would actually cost more, but still Apple is pretty much in the ballpark of what these Windows PCs offer in terms of performance. Now, one of Apple's strong suits is frankly, it's media engines. Supporting things like ProRes is something that most people just won't care about. We don't even shoot ProRes or RAW for most of our videos just because it uses so much storage. Still, Apple has accelerators for this. So if you do have to edit ProRes video, well, you have accelerators built into even these Mac minis to be able to edit that quickly. We actually took a bunch of project files that we used to do a pretty big project on STH. 
and just checking Adobe Lightroom, Photoshop, and also Adobe Premiere Pro and seeing what it would take to go and push all of those assets, to really render all of those assets. The sub $600 Mac mini did very well, actually besting a $1,000 mini PC. One caveat here is that of course, once you upgrade the storage, the two systems would be about the same price. There are a few performance caveats though. If you're running a lot of creative applications for video or photos, they tend to work very well on Apple Silicon. We've seen Blackmagic DaVinci Resolve fail with some new features on AMD and Intel CPUs that work really well on Apple Silicon. And that's something that we feel like we see a lot on the Adobe side on the Apple Silicon. Again, Adobe really has the real numbers, but we also use the Xeon W and Threadripper Pro workstations with fancy server ECC memory. And I think my M1 Max notebook, it, I mean, it at least feels like the Apple version of Adobe Premiere Pro probably errors out less. So at least on the base model Mac mini, it feels like Apple is very competitive. Power consumption is super low. We're in that same four to five-ish watt range at idle and under load, we're getting in the 40 to 45 watt range, depending on the workload. But I think you're supposed to be able to go up to like 65 watts. That's absolutely great. Many of the AMD Ryzen and Intel core systems at this performance level are hitting somewhere in that 60 to 100 watts, some of them even over 100 watts. Now, based on this and the fact that I traveled 155,000 miles last year, I thought like, well, what if we made the Mac mini into something that's portable? So I tried putting it into a plane seat, both using the in-plane power, but then also having my little monitor, keyboard, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll tell you, my seatmates 100% did not have that. So instead, what I thought was, well, what if I instead tried the M4 Max MacBook Pro? And really, my question was, if I upgraded from the 64 gig M1 Max MacBook Pro to the M4 Max, would there be a difference similar to what we saw on the mini PC side, really in that Mac mini form factor? From a connectivity standpoint, I mean, this has almost the exact same ports, except that we get things like Thunderbolt 5. Now, we don't even get Wi-Fi 7. Again, I think that the Mac mini M4 Max should get Wi-Fi 7 because it's 2024. Now, performance-wise between these two, a lot of applications are running at like 2x the speed on the M4 Max versus what they did on the M1 Max. And that's a huge deal. Let me give you one example. Recently, I was doing the AMD Epic 9005 Turin video that I had to go and we learned a little bit of information just before the launch of that 192 core part. And you know what I found? I found that there was some stuff that we just had to change. And so I had to go render the video. And when I did that on the M1 Max, it took a little bit too long. So I had to go on the keynote and then it took forever to upload, which meant that our video was an hour too late. Now, thank goodness, Alex edits most of the videos that are on STH. But on the other hand, it still happens two to three times a year where I have to go do that and I'm trying to hit a deadline. And so having something like the M4 Max is actually kind of useful. And another really good example is that we have a workflow where we have to transcode video, it then goes into Whisper AI and then has a transcript made of it. And then we have some stuff that happens on the back end. And when we did that workflow, we were anywhere between 1.6 to 2 X as fast on the M4 Max as we were on the M1 Max. And just to bring this into a little bit of context in terms of mini PCs again, probably one of my favorite mini PCs that we've reviewed recently and probably one of the fastest is the Asus ROG Nook, which we did a couple months ago. That has a fast Intel processor plus an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4070 eight gigabyte mobile notebook GPU. And so the combination of that CPU and GPU is actually really great. Now, because of that GPU, it's on the higher end of the power consumption, but also things like the price and size compared to a lot of the mini PCs that we review. At the same time, Apple is managing to hit that similar level of performance using a single chip in this notebook. Now, of course, there is one big caveat here, and that's frankly gaming. I mean, when we look at something like that Rognuk, it runs absolutely everything. You want to play a video game, go for it, no problem. And it's actually a pretty good experience. That's very similar to if you had a notebook with an RTX 4070, eight gig mobile, you may not get the best battery life if you have something like that. But on the other hand, at least, uh, you know, at least you can go play whatever the heck you want. On something like a Mac, frankly, gaming, they just don't care apparently because gaming on a Mac still sucks. Of course, there are titles that work. And so if you wanna play something like an eSports title, like a League of Legends, you can get that working on a Mac and it's gonna work great. On the other hand, if you wanna play something like a Counter-Strike 2, well, that won't work at all. If you wanna go run something like a Diablo 4, good luck, you're gonna have to go probably buy some kind of software way to hack that thing to actually go work on a system like this. And you don't have to take my word for it, just go look at your Steam library and figure out how many games do and don't work on the Mac platform. There are a ton out there that just frankly don't work. 
So while there are a lot of productivity tools that work really well on a Mac, on the other hand, gaming just sucks. So when it comes right down to it, I think that the Apple Mac mini is darn good, but it's not perfect. If you want Windows, for example, or if you just wanna put normal Linux on a system, I actually think the mini PCs are much better. But one of the reasons I think Apple is doing so well is because they are scaling their architecture. So the same basic architecture that's in a $550 Mac mini is in a $4,500 laptop and goes even well beyond that into something like a ultra chip that would go into a Mac studio. So I think that the theory that Apple is uh, definitely doing better without Intel, or at least that idea of having a discrete CPU and GPU when they had their Intel platforms, I think is totally something that is, you know, valid, right? And a lot of people talk about, you know, the need for ARM, but really what Apple's getting out of that is the ability to do that tight coupling and get a really good product. Intel and AMD really need to figure this out. And with NVIDIA threatening to launch its own chips, I, I think that this is something that, frankly, Intel and AMD need to figure out sooner rather than later. But of course, I'd love to hear what you guys think. So definitely put that down in the comments. This has been a crazy video to go produce. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. And if you do want to see our supercomputing coverage, you can go check that out on the main site. And always with these videos, if you did like it, well, share it with your friends and colleagues, but also give it a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.